In the last 15 years, I have created over a thousand artworks in Photoshop and all these artworks were sent to a printing office to print. It's actually how I started using Photoshop. I started making artworks for events in the Netherlands and all these flyers, posters, business cards were sent to a printing office. So you can say I have a lot of experience in this field and I'm gonna tell you how you can make your files print ready for the printing office. Now, before you start actually designing something in Photoshop to send it to a printing office, first make sure you check the specifications from the printing office. So here I have a printing company in the Netherlands and you can see on the website, they print a lot of different stuff. So what I usually do is I go to the website and I look at the specifications for the files. You can find it usually on the downside of the site. Here you can find it. And here you can see how to make your files print ready. And this already gives me a lot of information on how I need to send these files to the guys. You don't need to read all this. You can't read this probably, but what you want to see here is you can see here, they want PDF 2001. So let's go into Photoshop. And when I'm usually done with a design like this, I made a poster, it was in April this. And what I usually do is I flatten all the layers. So I have one layer here and then I make sure I go to mode and I select from RGB, go to CMYK. Usually these guys want CMYK to print. There are some printing offices that want RGB now, but we, most of the time it's CMYK and you can instantly see how the colors are a little bit desaturated because when you print something, it's gonna be a lot less saturated on paper than on your screen. So let's go back. Now you might wonder, why don't I start working in CMYK from the start? Well, if I create a design like this and I wanna use it, for digital, I wanna make sure when I use digital file, it's really bright and saturated, but for printing, it will be a little bit less. So I make sure I have them both. I use RGB for screen and CMYK for printing, right? So that's the first thing. So let's go back to the website. You can see they want PDF 2001. When I go back in Photoshop, I can go to file, save as, and I will select PDF here. And when I click on save, I have here PDF X1A2001. And that's exactly how they want their files. Sometimes you're just fine with selecting high quality print if they don't say anything about it. But the best way to get to know this information is to just ask them, send them a mail and ask them which file do they want. Now here you can see CMYK, that's what they want. That's what we got. And let's move down. You can see here again, PDF 2001. And there is some other stuff that you need to look out for. That's the marks and bleeds. That means that when you create something in Photoshop, you have to create it a little bit bigger than the original printing size. Because when they're gonna print your stuff, they're gonna print it a little bit bigger so they have some space to cut it out. So let's go back to the website. You can see here the bleed, three millimeters on each side. That means that I have to make my design three millimeters bigger than the original printing file. So when I go to image, I select canvas size, and here I will switch to millimeters. So if my printing size in width is eight, four, seven millimeters, I will add six millimeters because we need to add three millimeter on both sides. So that will be eight, five, three. And for this one, if it's one, one, nine, four, it will be one, two, zero, zero, oh, one, two, zero, zero, right? So it's a little bit bigger. And that's why it's better to start working in this little bit bigger size from the start. So you don't have to do this later on at the end of the year design. There's some other stuff you need to take care of is when you place text, don't place it too close to the edge. I have seen some stuff going on like people placing text like this. And remember we created some extra space here. You wanna make sure it's safe. So if they're gonna cut it off like this, you will lose a little bit of text at the bottom of your design or at the sides, whatever you do. So make sure you place text really kind of inside your design and you can place these guidelines with a couple of millimeters here extra to make sure you don't place it there. But after a while, you just get used to it. I don't place these guidelines anymore. I just look at, at my design and I know I cannot place text here closer because it's way too dangerously to risk the text get lost from the cut, right? So don't do that. So let's just actually create a new file for print. Let's go to file new. So let's go to print. And let's say I wanna create a flyer that is A5 format. This is a format that I used a lot in my design career. And when you look at the resolution, it's 300. 
This is also something you could look at at the website of the printing office. Usually 300 is enough, especially for flyers, 300 is enough. If you have smaller designs, like maybe business cards, they usually require 400 or 450. So that's something you need to check on the website, what they require. But always, if you use more than they want, that's just better. It's not going to be worse. If you use less, that's not good because then the quality is low. So for flyers, it's usually 300. And remember, we need to make it three millimeter bigger on each side. So I will add three millimeter to this and three millimeter to that when I create this file. And we work in RGB first. And when we send it to the printing office, we convert it to CMYK to get the right colors. Here you can leave 8-bit, that's fine. And that doesn't matter. Another thing to keep in mind that is if you work with huge files, like maybe a huge poster or a billboard that's outside, they don't require 300 resolution. They just require like 72, 100 and JPEG is usually fine. But again, you have to check it with the printing office what they require. So the best thing to do is to just look at the website and find this information there or send them an email and asking what are your requirements to send my files to print, right? So that's the best way. Then you're 100% sure you're sending the right files. So that's actually pretty much it. So I created this poster and what I would do is flatten this image, change it to CMYK, and then just save it as PDF as they required, like that. And here I need to select 2001 because that's what they required and just save it. And I send that to the printing office and they take care of the print. So that's pretty much it. It's actually pretty easy. You just need to check the website, what they require. And usually it's 300 resolution and CMYK for the colors and some extra space for the bleeds, right? So they cut it off right. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you understand how to do this now. If you want to know how to export your photos for your website and you want to make sure it's search engine optimized, make sure to check out this video. And until then, catch you on the next video.